morning. Graham, thank you. Thank you for asking me to come and talk today. Um, I'm going to talk about stakeholders and ringing and the future and about change. Doing in another area that affects our world, that art has been doing so well over the past few years. And uh, just last year, Graham came to Worcester and did a workshop for 18 of our ringers. So we want now more people teaching and we'll be building a closer connection with art over the next two years. Stakeholder is a word used a lot in business, and it touches my professional work in university and at the companies I work. 80% of my job at Worcester Cathedral is about managing stakeholders, and about 20% is actually just running the ringing. The ringing's the easy bit. We do everything from being rounds on six to Bristol Maximus on a 50 hundred weight 12. That's on a Monday night. Now, we're running two practices in Bristol at the same time. We've got 25 ringers split between two towers and 14 of them are under 18. And we ring on Sundays and we ring a lot of court appeals and we ring a lot of appeals. I don't do this, we do it. And I can't do it. I would not, we would not be successful if it weren't for the support of our stakeholders. And that means advocacy. Now a stakeholder, as you all know, is someone in an organisation who has an interest in what we do. They can affect what we do. Now both negatively and positively, it's two sides of the same coin. My internal stakeholders are the people I ring with, my external stakeholders are the people outside the Cathedral Guild. That's the church and the community. Now, this, these principles apply everywhere. The scale might be different, whether you're at a parish church, big cathedral, the ideas change. Now, I was going to start off with a quote. It's not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It's not the strongest that survives. The species that survives is the one that is able to adapt and adjust best to the changing environment. That's a quote from Darwin, as you all know. Times are tough for ringing at the moment. And our ability to adapt, and only our ability to adapt, will survive our future. Now, I'm not by nature a uh, pessimist. But we have to think about what's happening around us at the moment. The status quo equals inertia, and any attempts to recreate the past will fail. You can't solve a problem with the thinking that created it. So we need to think differently. Now, we built a sort of model at Worcester. Gosh, this is sensitive. These are the three groups of stakeholders. <coughs> Ringers, the church, in the community, and this is what happens now. 80% of our current effort is aimed at ourselves. We are very good at talking to other bell ringers. We're brilliant at it. But only 20% happens here. Now, the facts are, the church owned the bells. Full stop. There might be one or two secular rings around. You're trying to get a ring at Manchester Town Hall now. Ringers weren't even consulted about the closure. The community owned the noise. And the community is a very complex group of stakeholders. So it's easy, actually. That's just a, a young ringers competition photograph taken at Worcester. Full of activity. Please, please think about what we do now, especially with art, as this great platform for change is look outwards and talk to the church and the community. Now, it's all about communication. And let's ask you some questions. Why is bell ringing relevant and important to the church? Who's got some answers? Because I've come here to learn rather than talk. <laughs> it's a fellow advertising thing. It says the church is there in a loud way. Absolutely. Bells advocate the church's presence in the heart of the community, yes? Let's be proud of it. 
Never mind the sound control. What else? Rolls. Yeah. What else? What else? Why is it relevant for to the church? Come on, we ring every week on Sundays, don't we? Right, so that goes back how long? Yeah. Ringing, say, 400 years. Church, 2,000 years. What else? What else do we do? Call people to service. Call people to services. What else do we do? Celebrate. Celebrate what? Events both within the church and outside the church. Hang on, what's the key word? Outside the church. Unity. The community. There you go. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples of uh, things we did at Worcester. Um, every uh, Remembrance Sunday, we ring a peel, and I discovered that uh, one of our neighbours, bells very loud, his dad sat in his front room for the whole of the appeal, holding his medals from the World War II, remembering all his friends that died in Burma. The only reason I know that is because I know our neighbour. When we rang appeal for the royal wedding, some other neighbours welcomed us at the bottom of the tower with 12 glasses of well, 12 glasses and four bottles of champagne. <laughs> I like our neighbours. We need Let me ask you to do this. Do it when you drive home, on the train, do it in your head. Write a two to three minute elevator speech about selling ringing. Have any of you had to do this? Kate does it all the time. We should all be doing this. And share what, and share what we write, share what we say. So we've all got a different story, haven't we? I'm sure we all have a feel-good story about why ringing is important to our church and our community. But I think we hide behind those thick stone walls too often. We hide far too much. Now, I'll give you this presentation. These are your key stakeholders in the church. Now, I would ask all of you, do you know them? Do you know all those people? Because every single one of those can affect positively or negatively what we do. Every single one. So church, your key stakeholder is the vicar. Absolutely key. Then the church wardens, they're legally responsible for the hardware. Treasurer, money. How many of you keep your church accounts with the PCC? How many of you keep them outside? If you keep them inside, have them as designated funds, you're losing 20, you, you get 25% 20, gift aid. Why aren't we doing that? Why this autonomy? Why wrap ringing up? You're losing 25% of potential income. So, bigger church, how many of you know your bishop? Your archdeacons? Your DAC bell advisor? your safeguarding officer, your diocesan press or media contact. Right, left hand side's easy, isn't it? Work here. Talk to them, and you'll probably find they'll really love to hear from you. Invite them to a practice. Go and talk to them. These people, very important. DAC community, massively important. And the bishop, um, the bringing for Sunday's bit, wasn't it? Don't bishops like that sort of thing? <laughs> I think they'll find they'll really be with you. So my question to all of you is, actually, how do you engage? So please do something differently when you go home today. And in the community, do you know your neighbours? Our neighbours know we like drinking. <laughs> Our neighbours also know that they're welcome in the tower. Every New Year's Eve at Worcester, we invite everyone that lives near the cathedral up for midnight and ringing. 
we have about 60 or 70 people up there, and none of them are ringers. And the ringing room looks like the front room of, in uh, The Young Ones the next morning. <laughs> it's great, because they actually, the best way to get someone to advocate for you is to get it to ask them to do it for you. Someone else sells your story. So, we all know the local pub, don't we? Yes? Do we talk about ringing to non-ringers in the pub? Or do we sit together and talk about X, Y, and Z? Your parish councillors. Who knows your MP? <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> uh, right, we won't go into that. Uh, um, invite your MP or your councillors to your practice. Mm. Why not? Mm. I've got a meeting on Monday, one meeting in the House of Lords, one with our MP, because we're doing a new project in Worcester, which some people may have heard about. We're looking at putting a ring of bells in a school, in a state school. An ordinary, thank you, an ordinary state school. And if you read yesterday in the news, there's a fear that the teaching of arts is going to diminish in the secondary sector, especially music. Isn't ringing a form of music? It's a form of maths, it's also sport. So the head teacher, who's a friend of mine, and, gov and the governors have asked us to work on a project for a new building which will have a bell tower. Mm. And we've just put in a grant for £4 million to the government's education funding authority. We don't know whether it will happen. We may lose it. It may, may happen two years' time, it may happen in five years' time. But that's a vision. <coughs> I need our MP support. Now, what's in it for him is that Worcester is a key marginal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I work a lot with the Worcester arts community and heritage community, and they support and advocate what we do. The um, antique shop next to the cathedral always, put, always puts in a notice when we're ringing. Now, some of this is, a lot of it when we talk about <coughs> talking out, we talk about recruitment, and actually it's not just about recruitment, it's about getting people to support us. So, how many of you talk to environmental health people? People might say your bells are too loud. Is that because you've had to, or because you went to them, Chris? I've had to go to them for our project, because putting bells in a secular building means a lot more hassle that we have to put up within the church. So they came and did an acoustic test at the cathedral, and the bells aren't as loud as the dean tells me they are. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got the proof. But if we go and engage, rather than react, because there's been some hassle, the police, how many of you know your local police? <laughs> you live in Wales. <laughs> Um, we've obviously had a lot to do with the rescue services recently, but the police, <laughs> the police, the police um, um, access security, but also the, West, the West Mercia Arms Unit did a hostage rehearsal in our roof spaces recently. It was a fantastic thing to see, but then they're actually more interested in us ringing than we were in the hostage scenario. <coughs> And then the person, oh yeah, ringing's really cool. They do really interesting things. We, we spend too much time apologising for what we do, I think. And not really, really sick. Now, group on the left, relatively easy. I would urge you to talk to politicians. Because what's in it for them is a lot. Especially if you're in a key marginal. <laughs> Funders and heritage organisations, your museum service, your art service. Invite people in to talk to you and think, well, how do I engage? Now, this is a bit of a tick list. Um, publicise our ringing. I've got some examples to give you. Um, and recently, we, we, we ring peels during the working day at Worcester. It's residential and their businesses. No sound control. We put a little postcard in all our neighbours' doors. 
and this says, uh, this is for a peel rung on to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme. It's an important civic event, isn't it? Uh, battle of Galavelt, there's a big uh, Galavelt Memorial in Worcester. The first battle of the First World War was fought by, by the men, by men from the Worcestershire Regiment, as it was then. And we told everyone why the bells are ringing. And when the bells were cast again in 1928, they were cast as a World War I memorial. So there's a real World War I provenance for ringing in Worcester. So, open days, do you all do open days? Talks? Do you, do you have <coughs> parents' evenings for young ringers? The best way to get a young ringer to stick it here is for mum and dad to encourage them. Because <laughs> <laughs> like it means they're out of mum and dad's it. hair and they're away from their mum and dad. <laughs> Difficult for my son, we go to separate times. <coughs> that's the best way to do it. Pub mate, do some leaflets. Got a few here that we do. Advertise your ringing. You use local radio, local press. Use it all the time. <clears throat> Streaming stuff on the web. What happened at St Paul's Cathedral recently with the appeal that was streamed was absolutely fantastic for ringing. Really annoyed Westminster Abbey, scored a lot of points there. <laughs> that, that was inspired. Absolutely brilliant. Exhibitions. Do you do talks in your church? Be proud of it. And key thing is to make it local and make it special. Now let's talk a bit about the media. Because this, okay, I've talked about theory now, but actually doing it can get a bit tricky. Think about what messages you want to communicate. That actually is a really hard question. <clears throat> what are we selling? What do we want? <clears throat> it's, remember, it's just a conversation. This is the chats we have in our head all the time, or we have in the pub. Having a chat with a stranger is a bit harder, isn't it? No. Next time you're underground, knock on someone's shoulder and start to talk to them about ringing, and they'll think you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> I would encourage you to think about doing it. <laughs> Always be positive. And please avoid words like but and try. They're the two most damaging words in the English language. You can replace but with and, and try with do. John, ask me to do something. I'll try. No, I see, I'm finished. <laughs> These simple words leave, leave a very powerful message. We had, I was doing some work at Shell a couple of years ago with a group who are having quite a tough time, and they were saying, but, 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 but. So I said, every time someone says, but, you put a pound in for breast cancer research, you raised a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Technical talk, nerdy bell ringing talk is boring. It is dull as ditch water. And for the stuff I'll give you, it's actually written by a non-ringer, who's a musician, but she loves ringing. And if you want to use, beg, steal, copy, please do. Please acknowledge us, but you're welcome to use it. So we've engaged others in, a, in the performance arena to support us. Uh, now, if you go onto radio, radio is really easy. I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> radio is lovely. Bells make great radios. Next time you're ringing for Easter, Remembrance, Christmas, Someone in your band rings their first court appeal, gets our awards. Wow, what a great story that is for local radio. How many of you have done this? Yeah, do it. Local radio especially is quite understaffed. And they really want people to go to them. Phone them up. That's what local radio means. Ringing is just great copy. Local newspapers are always more copy. The photograph, you think, school awards, art awards, great. Especially young ringers. TV is a bit harder. That is quite terrifying. For those of you that have done it. But if you're going to do it, just practice. Because all you have to do 
is get someone to hold one of these in front of you. And it's exactly the same thing. Now, social media. Please be careful. Uh, you have no control. None. So, Facebook seems to be the, one of the main platforms for uh, bringing social media. Once you put stuff out there, it's there forever, and you lose control of it. When we had our incident at Worcester a couple of weeks ago, we didn't release the picture. It went on Twitter. The rescue services put the picture on Twitter. Out it goes. The local newspaper phoned me on Sunday morning saying what happened. I thought well, it was a bit of local news. A man was rescued from the town. We'd done the rescues two or three times. To us, it was a bit, okay, we've done this before. There was a lot of blood. He was all right. Then that evening, I got a phone call from the Today programme, and I thought it was one of my, my friends winding me up. Because <laughs> I'd actually fallen asleep. And then suddenly we found it was everywhere. Now, we didn't put the story out. It is a bit sobering. So think, how would you react if a story that could be spun the wrong way for ringing got out about where you ring? What would you do? Because that community you're engaging with are your stakeholders. It's a bit sobering, isn't it? Now, there's been a lot of stuff uh, on social media also about York Minster recently. Now, I think it's important we talk about this. Calling the Dean of York a bitch and referring to the church women as Nazis isn't doing us any good at all. And this has happened. I've witnessed both. A few sober faces. But that's out there. Now the church are our key stakeholder. They own the hardware upon which we are totally and utterly dependent. We've never had it so good, actually, but times are going to change. And if anyone think, and the Church of England sincerely thinks, that ringers don't take safeguarding seriously. Now, I think this is one of the best communities in ringing to talk to, to change that view. Because everything we do is about the future of ringing, especially working with young people. We cannot have that. Now, very few people know the entire story of what's happened at York, and there's been a lot of awful stuff said about it. And it's also no secret that York Minster and Worcester Cathedral have a lot of contact. Our bishop is a very close friend of the deans. Their uh, presenter is a very close friend of our director of music. And I, with my colleagues, have been working with York Minster for the past six months. And that's to help them and support them. And everything that they've seen on Facebook and social media, they have got copies of. Now, what is their view of ringing? Now, the deans of Ely and Salisbury, and where's the other cathedral without any bells? Norwich. I don't think they wake up every morning worry about whether their bells are ringing, actually. Do they? Now, it's very sad what's happened at York. And everyone sincerely hopes it will be fixed. But I think it's up to us to fix the damage that others have caused for us. We need support and we need advocacy. Now, this is something we do at the cathedral. These pull-up banners, a lot of them here, are brilliant. But please write them for non-ringers. <laughs> Short words, no but or try. <coughs> non-ringers. Um, this is an exhibition uh, we had um, done by, uh, by HLF. Whoops, sorry, let's go back a bit. Um, which is, has been, in, it's been all around Worcester, in our library, in our museums, and a lot of church architects and people doing bell projects have borrowed it from us. Because it tells a story about bells in the community. I've got a paper copy as a fold out for you. If you go on our Ringers website, you can take all this stuff and download it. We publish everything. Something else we do, and I'm sorry, this is totally indulgent. Um, this is a concert programme for uh, Haydn's Nelson Mass. 
and this is put on by the Worcester Festival Choral Society. So all the great and the good of Worcester come to these concerts. <coughs> we put an ad in there, it's not for recruitment. And it says this, I'm a bit of a Nelson, He's, Nelson's one of my heroes, so I was being a bit indulgent. During the Napoleonic Wars, the cathedral bells were frequently rung by order of the dean. A road of references for the, battle, for the victory at the Battle of the Nile, which after, after which Hayden's Mass was renamed. Ringers for Nelson's victory paid 10 shillings. Ringing on the 4th of September, surrender the Dutch fleet paid 10 shillings. After the Battle of Copenhagen, when Nelson was given the freedom of the city, ringers were paid again. Now the tagline is, for hundreds of years, bells have rung for the church and the community to tell people about important news. They still do. It is a bit indulgent, and being in the cathedral, I can do that sort of stuff. But the people who read this, they're important to my future and our future. And we do quite a lot of this. The other tagline we use is heavy metal soul music. <laughs> which I know people use, but it's great when people like it. So why are our stakeholders important? Now let's, let's just take this up a level. Let's talk about ringing nationally. Last year, the DCMS, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, have published, they're doing an English Churches and Cathedral Sustainability Review. How many of you filled this in? Two. Right. These are the stakeholders we have to think about. These are the people deciding the church's future. Because the church, churches need money. So we've got uh, Lord Grossman, Heritage Alliance, Tony Baldrins, Tony Baldrins, the chair of the church buildings council, that's the DAC's boss. Um, funders, Heritage Lottery Fund, Peter Luff, our bishop. John Inge. Now, this the church is talking to the government, basically saying we can't afford to keep our buildings open. If control over ringing went into the civil domain, we would have massive problems. Imagine getting permission to ring with safeguarding forms from your council, who have probably outsourced it anyway. <clears throat> One of the reasons why safeguarding is such an issue is that vicars don't know who are in their churches and they are accountable. <coughs> Here, even more serious in some ways, this <coughs> review, which I think is going to be published in, in April, will talk about a direction for what the church is going to do with its buildings. Now, have a look at the report when it comes out. And this is a quote from it. Um, we must open up these buildings for wider community, cultural and heritage use. This is going to affect us. Now, either we can let it affect us positively and be part of it, or, oh, no, you can't ring because there's something going on. Or, no, we're going to use the space under the tower for something. Now, many of you know there's a church in Oxford, St. Cross Oxford. It's just been taken over by Balliol College. The bells are sealed. Never to be rung again unless the college move out. Now, a lot of bells in Oxford, who cares? But actually, I think we all care, don't we? Mm -hmm. The Oxford DAC, quite conservative. Oxford Diocese is very evangelical. Evangelicals don't care much about bells. And sooner or later, I'm convinced an, evangel an evangelical church with bells that aren't rung are going to sell them for money. So that is why our advocacy is really important. So. Good practice. Now, let's be part of that good practice. And this is from Bishop John. We are incre keen to increase the use of our churches by communities. Now, ringers, unfortunately, are seen as an external user by a lot of the Church of England. You don't have to be religious to support the church. But I'd much rather be part of this than a customer. Now, some facts. There's 16,000 churches in the Church of England. This comes out of Bishop John's report. Look up Bishop John Inge report, uh, 2015 on Google. Uh, working group, which, and out of which the DCMS survey is happening. 
There's 16,000 churches in the, UK, in the Church of England. Only a third of them have bells. Four more ringing bells. So two-thirds of it are, oh, well, churches view of bells, actually. You can see how it's diminishing a bit, isn't it? In 2013, an average of 13,000 was spent on each building. So that's 208 million, or 72 million, 73 million, the churches with bells. It's been said that ringers spend millions of pounds ringing. I, uh, one of my ringers, one of our ringers at Worcester is a very keen tower grabber. He knows how much he's spent on every tower. I said, how much have you spent to ring at the tower and how much did you give the tower? Can you imagine what the ratio is, can't you? And that's fine. There were 5,000 peels run last year by 2,500 ringers. 800 of those only rang one peel. Now, if those 5,000 peels had an average of £50 for a peel fee, £250,000, compared to £73 million being spent on churches. Now, where I live are the BRF of our dear ringing association. So we don't give tower, we don't give money for fabric, but without the fabric, the bells don't work. So think about the wider contribution. So how much do we contribute? We get 6,000 rings of bells for peanuts. <coughs> Absolute peanuts. Now this is the tough question, which I think one day, let me see, I'm going to be really a bit tough. How many of us here started ringing 40 years ago? More than, I said, so I'm being, no. Okay, when we started ringing, then, look back, and not a lot has changed in how we work, how we ring, has it? We go and ring, we ring peels. There have always been the issue about teaching and recruitment. It's been going on for years. In 40 years' time, the landscape is going to look massively different in terms of the security and welfare and access to the churches with bells. And our duty, I think, sincerely, is to make sure that the lovely world we live in now and that we enjoyed 40 years ago, is there for 40 years in the future. And that's why advocacy with our stakeholders is really, really important. So, I did another few sums. 6,000 churches with bells. So what would be a crude cost of replacing all these bells? So I thought £90,000 <coughs> per tower. It's a crude average. Any bell founder would love that sort of figure. Think of the business. So that's half a billion pounds sitting in church towers. What's the value of the archaeology and the history, the cultural heritage, 400 years? We get all this for free. Now, this isn't just about giving money. This is about giving support. Support can mean more than money. If we really, really, truly engage with our stakeholders, our future will be fantastic. But I think the elephant's in the room. And we've been in total denial for a long time about it. So, whoops. so that's why, to me, it's very important. When um, Bishop John's wife died uh, a few years ago, Bishop John lives right under the cathedral. And the day after his wife died, there was due to be a peel. And I thought straight away, right, that's, we, won't, we won't ring. He phoned me up, not anyway, I said, Mark, carry on. That's what Denise would have wanted. It's quite a, quite a powerful thing to say. And apart from that, I know him, I work with him, he's my neighbour. Bells are important to him, not only as a man of faith, part of the community, but he knows us. And he said, that's what Denise would have wanted. And I would tell that story every week, because I think it's really important. So can I ask you this, please go home and think about what you do differently. So if you do something differently, something will happen. What does that say?
So that's my talk. Thank you. Uh,